were just talking to me about the importance of screening. So if you could just go on with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I basically go over it. Um, it's important that uh, we should uh, go for screening because there are many things which could be happening mm -hmm. uh, and we are not aware. And uh, unless you go to, to the right people with the right equipment, then they can be able to check and, and prepare you for it because it's only through early intervention they can be able to sort out illnesses which can complicate. I give an example of a hernia. If you don't sort out that hole, mm -hmm. the intestines will keep coming out and finally they may get stuck and they may die. And then, then you have a problem. Uh, cancer is becoming very common. And the best way of dealing with cancer is diagnosing it early. Uh, a lot of people come when it's rather late, but then now it's more like a salvage situation and you don't want that to happen. So we urge everybody to go for screening early and that is why we're, we're, we have these camps to screen people and encourage them, make them aware that early screening is important to be able to uh, avert uh, serious situations. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when we talk of hernias, uh, these are swellings, right, as you have put it. Yes. And I believe um, most people maybe when you see a swelling, maybe on any part of your body, it does not really um, like shock you as much. So when exactly does should one decide that, okay, I should go uh, get this swelling checked? Because I feel like most of the time we just assume, okay, this is just going to go away. Any unusual swelling, which is seems to be either painful or progressively increasing in size, mm -hmm. I think you should uh, take time and get it checked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there's some swellings which appear because of allergies or they just disappear after a short while. So you may maybe observe and watch over it. But if you notice it keeps coming back or it's getting painful or progressively increasing in size, please seek medical attention. It could just be a symptom mm -hmm. of something underlying which needs to be sorted out. Okay. Yeah. All right. Back to you, Catherine. Um, maybe why did the Rotary Club of uh, Masai Mara decide to, you know, be part of this um, medical camps? Why specifically did you decide to get into it? We decided to partner with the Surgical Society of Kenya and other partners because we needed to mobilize the surgeons to get to the people. Mm -hmm. They need the resources, we need the consumables, we need uh, to mobilize through media, through local leaders, mm -hmm. through the churches, through the schools. That's why we came on board to help them sensitize people. and. Just let people know coming for screening and just being a candidate for uh, surgery is not a death sentence. It will create hope. It's just creating hope to people. Mm -hmm. Yes. And aside from these medical camps, um, how maybe are you as the Surgical Society of Kenya ensuring that you, you have your services uh, devolved, you know, whereby um, someone who's deep into Kana will also get the same services as someone who goes to a hospital in Nairobi, probably Kenyatta Hospital? Right. The Surgical Society of Kenya uh, is a non-profit uh, organization or society. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we, our man mandate is twofold. One is to try to upscale and increase uh, the number of, of training of surgeons and also those who are already in practice to improve on their skills. So we offer various uh, connections and, uh, for, for these people to be able to upscale their, their skills. Second is now what we'd like to use our time now to go out there uh, and be able to offer services. Some of, uh, some of these surgeons have been trained under a college program called the COSEXA. And uh, these people, the training of this type of specialist is that it's done at the, their workstation, which could be in Narok, could be in uh, Tenwe, could be in Kerich, wherever it is. Mm -hmm. The beauty with that kind of training is that they're not uh, uprooted from their station. So they train and work. So when they finish their, their, their course, they able to work in those areas. Mm -hmm. So as it were right now, we're training about 50. We're producing at least 50 surgeons a year mm -hmm. compared to maybe 20, 30 years ago when we were producing less than four. Mm -hmm. So there is a huge number of surgeons trained now, then special, subspecialists also, orthopedic surgeons, neurosurgeons, urologists out there, mm -hmm. all over the country. Fine, majority of them are in the major towns. But uh, not all of them are employed. In fact, uh, if the government and the county government could be, uh, be able to take them on, I'm sure 
uh, a lot of these issues can be sorted out right out there in the county and in the rural area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, when, when we walk around the streets of Nairobi, um, you will not miss a board somewhere written, you know, we cure this, we cure that, Daktari Kutoka where, Daktari Kutoka where. Are there policies that really, you know, govern this or try to regulate? Because I believe, you know, this, I don't know if we can call them Miti Shamba and all, sometimes we're not really sure about them. And um, they're marketing themselves all over the place. Are there policies to try regulate that? Unfortunately, um, the policies that regulate doctors or healthcare professions is different from those that regulate this Mitishamba. So for example, there are two regulatory bodies, one under the Ministry of Health. The Ministry of Health has various regulatory bodies for the healthcare workers, that is a mainstream medicine. Mm -hmm. But the others, the so-called Mitishamba who you're talking about, are regulated by the Ministry of Culture and Social Services. Mm -hmm. So over there, it's there's hard any regulation. You can put your notice board somewhere, pay your city council fees, and claim whatever you want to claim, and people go to them. So there, there we, we, we really can't do much about it, but now we hope that maybe the government will be able to look into that because uh, we need to bring some sanity in, in, in healthcare. Yeah, you have, we've seen sad situations where somebody keeps following up some of these uh, unregulated people, mm -hmm. and by the time things get out of our hand and out of control and the patient is now penniless, that's when they rush now to the hospital mm -hmm. for treatment and by then it's too late and uh, the patient dies. Mm -hmm. So that this is some such unfortunate cases when a cancer which could have been sorted out earlier mm -hmm. has now gone mismanaged and its escalated. patient comes later escalated and there's very little you can do. Mm -hmm. So we, we wish something can be done to regulate this group or bring them all under the umbrella Ministry of Health so they can be able to, to, to see what they're doing and be able to bring some sanity in their practice. Okay, yeah. okay. On that note, we take a really short break, but don't you go far. We'll be back with this conversation.